And there we have it, that's all done. Quite happy with the way that's come out. I had a few little problems with it, um, obviously covering some of those marks on there, but we're all happy now. And what we can actually do is let this dry off. I'm gonna give it probably about an hour totally to dry off. And then what we're gonna do is come back. We're gonna mask up some of the areas very carefully. And then once we've got them masked up, what we can do is we can give it some different color panels, things like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could overcoat this obviously with any type of acrylic or enamel paint once this is totally dried. Another thing you can do is obviously give it a lacquer coat um, to make it nice and nice and shiny. Now, technically there's two ways of doing this. You can either spray it on. The trouble is if you ever spray it over the top of our clouds, you tend to lose this lovely sort of metal sheen um, that you get with it. Um, it's probably because when you're airbrushing, you get sort of more of a satin finish, and obviously this is very, very shiny, very, very glossy. Now, we're not looking for chrome on this, per se. Obviously, we will do around the nose ring, so that's why I'm quite happy with this sort of lovely, shiny metal look. But I still want to dull down a few little areas to give it some weathering, and then obviously when we're totally sealed up and done, I'm going to come back and we're going to paint the spine um, and the tail black. Okay, so you can see this had a, um, a couple of hours to dry totally everywhere and that makes the alkali totally handleable. If you don't let it dry totally, what tends to happen is you tend to take off a, a layer, um, if you like, a little lift of the, of the paint. Um, so giving it a bit of time allows that a little bit more. So what we've done, we've sprayed mast up and sprayed the nose ring um, with chrome, alkaline chrome. And then these light patches um, you can see around it, perhaps got these ones down the back here. Um, that's basically um, the actual uh, dull aluminium, which is just like a flat aluminium colour. And obviously we've done one around the front here. So what we've got, we've got some Tamiya tape. I like to use Tamiya tape. And all we're doing is just peeling off areas, back of the hand, give it a rub. Okay, peel it off, and again twice. And what that actually does is just take the grease from your, your skin, uh, and then it places it onto the, the tape, and it just takes the edge off of it, and it stops it pulling the surface um, of the alclad off. So we just do the same again. And all I'm doing, I'm working around the actual model, um, using references, which we've got, which obviously um, if you're watching the DVD, we'll be on the DVD. If not, there's various ones all around the net. Just pop onto something like airliners.net is a good one. And you can see those. So what we'll do, we're just going to cover this. So what we're doing, this one here is going to be the gun on the nose. And for that colour, what we're going to do is use um, dark aluminium. So what we've actually used, we've used polished aluminium, dull aluminium. And then we're actually coming along now. Uh, with this colour, which is the dark aluminium. So with all, same as we've done all the others, good old shake of the bottle. Okay, in. We're spraying a little bit higher air pressure, to be honest. We're spraying at about 20 PSI because we're not looking for a fantastic glossy finish. We're literally just trying to lay this colour on. So we just come up here like this, and all we're going to do is just going to blow in its nose. Let's say this is the dark aluminium. I'm hoping it'll give us a nice tonal change. So we just very carefully. And there we go. I hope you can see that on the nose there. We've got three colours on the go. So we've got a lighter. Um, a darker. And what we're going to do, we're going to polish this up very, very lightly. So what we're going to do now, we're going to pop around and pick out all the other ones. As I say, now if you check the references, and after I finish, I'm gonna run through them all with you where we've gone. But we've got a little one down here, we've got a panel underneath here, it's gonna be done. So I'm just gonna work around the entire one, putting this dark aluminium on. Okay, so you can see, we've mastered up. All we've done, we put tape down the spine and down the other side. We just use some scraps of A4 paper just to protect the wings. Um, so what we're gonna do now is put this black spine on. Now, you could probably just use their gloss or whatever, but I'm gonna use acrylic. Now, unfortunately, I'm actually out of um, gloss black or semi-gloss black in Tamiya, so I'm gonna use flat, and then what we'll do, we'll overcoat this with some clear gloss just to give it a, a more glossy, nice finish. So what we do, we just give this good old shake now, because we've sprayed Alclad on this before, um, obviously we want to make sure that we don't end up with um, actually metal flex in your thing. So what we've got here, we're just going to come in some acrylic thinners, just in there, and then 50-50, just like that. What we'll do, use a brush here, just give this a mix, just like so. <clears throat> 
Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to pick this up quite carefully using a bit of kitchen towel underneath to hold it all. So we're just going to check our sprays coming through all okay and nicely. And all we're going to do is spray this spine black. There again, we don't want to make this too wet as we're spraying it. We want it to be quite a, a dry thing so we don't get any bleed through going under the underside. Now, the thing about using a uh, acrylic over a, a lacquer or an enamel finish is that it, this will hide any fingerprints or anything else like that. So that's the trick to doing it this way. So what we'll do, we're just running this all along. Nice black tail. Make sure you do the top of the spine and around absolutely everywhere. And then what we've done around the front, um, I've actually used uh, the offcut of the templates for do it, masking the wheels to give us that nice curve on the actual nose, which saves a lot of messing around. So all that is, as I say, is the template um, from where you, it's the masking set for the wheels, which you normally put, obviously, on the tyres and things like that. So we're just going to do this quite lightly. Obviously, at this point, running it all along. to do this back area in black. Just like that. When we get this unmasked, what I'll do is I'll talk you through where I've sprayed uh, with the metal colours and the things like that. So I don't think I've forgotten, just moved on. It's literally just, it was quicker to mask up whilst everything was drying. There we go, quite happy with how that's going. So as long as we're happy, we're black absolutely everywhere. Then what we do, we're going to let this totally dry off and we're just going to give this a coat of future or Johnson's Clear or any type of gloss to bring this back from being a flat finish to a nice glossy black one. Okay, so there we go. That's the, the black spine on certainly brings it all to life. Now, what we did, we went round and we've used um, dull aluminium um, for these particular panels here. And then other panels we've popped along like the one under here, there's one down the front here, the gum nose and everything, that's dark aluminium. So between all three colors of it, it just gives us a little bit of a break. And we've got dark aluminium going along up here on the spine as well. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks when you're actually painting with owlclad is obviously it's extremely fragile surface. It will show fingerprints and you can rub through it extremely easily unless you're gonna build up coat after coat after coat. And this, to be honest, has had three coats. Um, so what, the way to protect that is to obviously give it a clear coat. Now, the drawback is if you just come along and was to spray this, this nice metal um, color and very fine effect that we've got will be lost because it will give it more of a, a satin finish or definitely a flat finish. And then that way we've ruined the metal look. One way to get around that problem is to actually come along and we've got some Johnson's Clear here and I've just got it in a cup. And then what you do very sparingly Literally, we just put a, a bit in between and we lightly brush a coat of this right over the top. Now, when I say sparingly, we just want a very thin coat of this on. Now, the great thing about using um, this particular um, Johnson's Floor um, acrylic um, gloss here is that it's self-leveling. So it will level and give us a very nice shiny finish. So if we just pop a, some up here, and because it's self-leveling and all those bits like that, it will give us a lovely finish without losing this nice 
metallic metal effect. Now the best thing to do, as I say, is to put on very thin coats and if you get little air bubbles in it, just give it a few little flicky movements to get rid of those and it will glow. And what we're going to do, we're going to pop it up this tail as well, just like so. And we're just brushing it absolutely everywhere along the spine. And there we go. Now if you do notice a run that perhaps you missed before or something like that, then it's quite simple. Just put a little bit more on the top of the actual um, floor polish you put on before and what it'll do, it'll melt through and get to the other side. Then all we do, just keep it moving and when you're happy that you can't see any bubbles or brush marks on it, then you can just stop. And there we go, that's on the, the side there like that. So we just turn over, and to be honest, I've actually done the underside, that's why I'm handling it. Um, but until then, until this is on, I don't like to handle it. But we're just gonna put it down this side as well. And just keep your, don't overload your brush um, at all. Just keep it very nice thin coat of this we want on. We don't want any thickness to this we don't because obviously we don't want to fill up panel lines and things now the tail obviously is a flat paint as we said on here so we'll put a little bit more up here and that'll just make it a little bit more glossy and a little bit easier to um, decal onto so we just pop it down the back but as I say just keep your fl it's flicking over it and all you'll do is say you'll just pull any excess you've got around off out the way just like that so we've just got to do this nose area and what it will do it will just give it a deeper glossy luster to it and it will just help it get that more metal effect but as I said if you was to try to do this certainly with a um, a uh, airbrush the gloss on you won't get quite a, as a nice finish I suppose so there we go, I'm quite happy with that is on. Obviously look for drips and runs. So we've just got to do this wing now. So I've got a little bit too much on here, which I've done deliberately. So what we're doing, we're pulling it around to all the areas where we're going to need it. So we're just making sure we've got flaps. And what we're gonna do is just drag it one direction as you do with your gloss work to the front. And then we're just gonna take some of that off, brush it out on the clean paper underneath, okay, and then just come back, take some more off onto clean paper, okay, and the same thing, so we're just going to pop around those, okay, and we're just taking it back now, and that will self-level already dry on this wing don't go around grabbing it heavy because uh, obviously you might end up with a few little marks but we just do underneath here as well okay so there we go this is all now dry um, obviously it's been left overnight with all types of future if you're using future it's best to leave them completely overnight to completely go hard because it looks like a gloss and it works like a gloss i.e if you've got your fingers on it sometimes it can go soft and obviously because we're going to be putting solvents over the top of it if it's not completely cured um, it defeats the object and it sort of rehydrates or melts so to speak but once future or clear is totally dry um, it's a really rock hard and not a lot will actually get through it so as you can see, nice black tail. We've still got, you know, if you see on the close-up, some very nice um, sort of metal finishes there, um, using the different tones and the shades as we've done, especially down the back here uh, with this back bit. It's very shiny, um, and it's one of those things with a camera, it tends to look a little bit too shiny. So what I've actually had to do is turn the lights down a little bit, otherwise you get terrible reflections, which is the only trouble with doing owl clouds and things like that. But obviously you'll see it better in the sort of final photos, but on the close-up you can get a real luster uh, for that metal finish um, and that's the beauty with alkalides if you're going to use anything else and I know there's things like rubbing powders and things like that but you don't tend to get an easy finish like this this is literally you put it on and away you go but as we said it's all in the preparation work 
Even myself, I've got a tiny little glue mark just down here, um, which is a bit annoying because I didn't see it before, but now in daylight as we are now, I can see a little glue mark. Really, I should have sanded out a little bit better. There again, it's one of those things. If I was being really fussy now, I could get out and I could sand that down, rescribe that panel line in and blow in that area and get a pretty good color match and wouldn't have to worry about it too much. But I'm not that worried about it, so we can just carry on. So the next thing, um, you've got two stages. You could either start putting it all together um, or you could go on with the actual um, uh, decaling itself. Now I'm going to go on with the decaling and obviously by the black tail and that you've obviously gathered that it's going to be in triple one squadron colours. So with that it has a very very nice tail on it. So if you're using the Eddard set you've got some great um, instructions for it um, which basically show you all where the actual um, decal placement is going to go. Just keep an eye on your numbers and your things and obviously test them first to make sure they're all going okay. The two ones obviously what I tend to do is I'll put down uh, all the big ones first and then I'll go along and I'll do all the little ones afterwards. Normally what I'll do is I'll work an area where I'm not going to be touching it, i.e. perhaps I'll, I'll use the tail and the belly and I'll go around and put them all on and I'll put those on last, which is my normal way of doing it. So I'm not going to bore you to death with showing you the next three hours probably of um, decaling this, but I'll go through what I'm going to be using. Obviously we've got some warm water, not cold, not hot. The reason I use warm water is, is that you get that shrinkage. When you put a um, decal into the water, they roll up and shrink up um, and obviously you know we're not very we're not going to be wanting that to happen so what we can do if I just show you one on to give you an idea with me it's all personal choice again I like to start on the bottom so we'll start down there so what I do I take some micro sole um, which is a great setting solution what this actually does is soften the actual um, decal itself and really it just helps it contour into the actual panel lines and the grooves and if you've got um, a rougher finish shall we say then um, so it will stop a lot of the silvering as well. But, you know, it's really what it's designed to do is to really make it snug fit and flat. The silvering is literally air bubbles underneath with a clear film, and then obviously, you know, it just shows through like that. So what I do is I'm just going to put a drop in the water. The reason I put it in the water because it will soften the water. You don't need much. We just give this a good old whiz round in there like that. So we just pick one here. I'm going to start on the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the underside um, roundel, which is the smaller one, I do believe. Let me just check the references. So we've got, so we want number 60. So obviously when you're cutting into the paper um, as you're going into them, pick an area where, you know, it's you, you can easily get to it without obviously cutting through another deck or something like that. So what we'll do, we'll just cut this one out. Leave somewhere where you can grab it. So with myself, I tend to leave a, a little tab on it so you can either hold it or in my case, I'll clamp it, spring-loaded clamps, just on like that. Over into the water, just goes into the water. Now if you put it down face down, it stops it rolling up on itself, which is always a problem. Obviously warmer water works quicker, um, because what it actually do, it just gets in there a lot faster. Cold water, it tends to just take a bit longer, but warm water doesn't take long. I usually poke, poke them in for about um, 15 seconds, take them out, and then what I do is I'll just give it a little nudge, nothing happening, there's no movement, I'm not gonna force it and give it you know, some real stick to try and move it, it's obviously just gonna take a bit longer, put it back in, let it go and what you can do you can just let it and stand it down for a moment until it gets going so in the meantime we'll wet the area so checking your references obviously for the exact location of where it's going to go so what we're going to do we're going to put some water down on there like that come back to our decal we're just sliding and it slides no problem at all so what we're going to do roughly is just plop it in the area just like that and then what we're going to do we're just going to have a good look to see exactly where it's going to go. So we check our references and we know it comes up to the leading edge. Um, looking for panel lines, there's a panel line I know that comes along here and it's to the leading edge. So it's sort of in this corner type of business. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit more forward. So it's down to here, covering up there. Uh, and if they've got it right, I'm happy with that. So we're just a little bit back from this gear door I'm going to place it right there. So then what you do, you grab a, a cotton bud, a better one, um, it's a bit better, uh, good of quality, wet it a little bit, wring it out, and then all we're going to do is just come along, I'm going to roll it 
all over the decal and then we come to the dry side of the cotton bud and we're just rolling out the water and then what you can do is give it a little rub when you're happy. Now this is a very shiny surface so you're not going to have much trouble with using it but certainly if you've got a bit of a rough surface to this you probably are going to need a little bit of a brush or something else. So what we've got here, we've got the micro sole, just dry out that brush, a little bit on the brush, don't flood it totally and all we're going to do is just paint that over the top of the decal like that, put that over to one side Okay, and then hopefully what will happen is that will start to wrinkle up a little bit. You might be able to see it on the light. And as soon as it starts to wrinkle, it will start to conform in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get on with the rest of this. It's going to take a couple of hours to get all these on. And then when we come back, we can start bringing it all together. Okay, so we've moved on um, a little bit. Obviously, the deckling is all finished now. Um, it all came together very, very nice. And obviously, the decals, because they're from um, Carter Graft, you know, it's a name you can really trust with this type of thing. They're very thin, but very tough. They go on, they conform extremely well. Had no trouble absolutely anywhere at all. The only thing that's slightly um, a little bit iffy is the walkways as they go down. I'm not sure if they should be sort of square um, on this end when you can see it here, if it should be square with the actual... Um, aileron on the end here or if it's right it should scoot up because you look at the different references and they've got different sort of ways of doing it and certainly the ones in the museum some of them don't even have walkways at all so you know but that's obviously a personal thing um, the wash that's gone on here um, I've already washed it I've just got its parts to take off of, of the wing obviously I'm not going to bore you to death for showing you washing every time um, but basically what I've done is um, I haven't used the black I mixed a little bit of um, it's probably 50% uh, black with 50% of the dark wash the reason for doing that is I didn't want it to sort of stand out too much if you like and really just be black lines all over it with the metal finish it does work very well um, but I just wanted to tone it down a little bit now being owl clad obviously it'll polish off extremely easily this is coming off now with no moisture at all but if you do moisten it just a little bit put it on the back of your hand to take it off you'll find that it just goes on a little bit better and it'll get any imperfections out just like so so we just take off this final part and we can have a good look around it to see how it is so obviously 90 degree corners, things like that, as we've got up here, we've got to get that off a little bit better. So if we just use a cotton bud, one. I've got a cotton bud here, just tease a little bit out of your teeth. And then obviously this tight little join along here, we can just come out. Now if you're going for a, a very, very glossy type of finish to this, you can actually put another coat of gloss over this probably by brush will be your best way um, and then that way it will be left with a very lusty glossy finish but quite frankly the wash isn't going to come off anytime soon you're totally fine with it so what we're going to do we'll just leave it on just like this and not overcoat it so we just check we haven't missed any bits where it's coming off but there we go, it's a good side this side, you can see probably on the close-up, but depending on the light, how it catches this will depend on, you know, obviously the luster that it's actually got. But it's a very, very nice overall finish. Okay, undercarriage. Um, all we've done really is just painted silver. We've done it with dull aluminium as we did underneath. Gone along and then obviously we've painted the tyres. A little bit of thinned paint around there and then it's had the wash which had it at the same time just over it as well. Now obviously you've got brake lines and things to go on there as well. I'll just get a little bit more of this wash off. Just got a bit too much on that tyre. There we go. So as obviously you say we've got brake lines but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in afterwards because sometimes they can actually be a problem when they connect into the undercarriage. So it's just going to fit in here just like this. Now, the thing you have to, oops, it should be just quite a nice push fit when I was testing a moment ago, but the thing you have to remember is, I'm going to do it now, <laughs> say, a minute ago it did it fine, but literally it should be, there we go, the undercarriage isn't a 90 degree straight down type of affair, it leans forward like this, so don't forget, if you're thinking, oh it's not sitting straight, it's actually, it should be, as you see it there, leaning forward um, there on the close up, it just comes forward like that, which gives it a you know that sort of look forward looking mark, and that's why we were important to have nose weight in there because without it, um, we'd have had all types of trouble. 
Okay, so those those bits are done. Um, the flaps, uh, as you can see, that are on there now, what I've done is literally pull them down just a little bit. I haven't dropped them all the way. I've sort of gone for a midway type of thing with it. Um, so now well, this is your choice. If you're going to overcoat it, overcoat it now. Let it totally dry before you go around handling it. If you're quite happy now, you can move on. So what we can actually do now, we can just whip this canopy off to see how we're looking inside. Now, if you get any residue, um, see on the close up here, any residue in there like that, your best thing to do, in all honesty, and the same as on your clear parts, is to use the move that out of the way. It's to use the actual the, the tack itself to pull it off. So you just use more of it, and there we go. We're just going to give that a, a run round, just like that. And then using a knife, we're just going to whip the clear uh, the canopies masks off. So what we're going to do with these front ones, we can just take these off and have a look to see how we are. So we're just down with this one as well. Obviously, just don't scratch the clear part. You just hook up underneath. I do it backwards, I end up making a, a mess, but there we go, we're just under there as well. <clears throat> there we go, that's that one done. We've got no overspray in there at all, which we're really happy about, which is obviously always a concern. Um, but there we go on the close-up, you can see that probably a little bit better. So really happy with that. So obviously we've got speed brakes to do, tail planes to go on. Um, and obviously the weapons. Now the weapons, it's very straightforward. Um, I've used these, obviously you get the two types of scar, uh, miss, uh, the missiles on there. Uh, these are the red tops which I'm going to be using for this one. Very easy, just goes together, spray it white and then there's a couple of decals that go on there. Then obviously what I'm going to do is going to gloss these and then come along and give them a wash as well just to weather them up and they're going to fit in. So that's very straightforward on how, how those go. Same with the undercarriage, we're going to pop that in in a moment get all those fixed in. It's all just little bits and pieces which are very straightforward to do. So obviously we've got the speed brakes on, very straightforward, tail planes are on, deckling's done, wash is finished now. We've installed the refueling probe, very simple, obviously the holes were there. The only thing I did with all straight parts like I've got here on the nose, this one here, if we just move you out way a little bit. <clears throat> is just take a knife and then obviously because you've got a seam line running down the middle of it, literally I just give it a rub over and as you might be able to see on camera, it just flakes it off. So if you just do it like that, and then just do to the sides, there you go, you've taken off that ray seam. So I just did that to the refueling probe, exactly the same way, very straightforward as I say to take care of that. Now, to be honest, we had um, a few little problems um, with the build itself. Um, mainly, I had a bit of super glue on my finger, and then I came along to uh, turn it over, stuck my thumb in it and peeled it off. Now unfortunately we had a bit of trouble with the camera, with the stills camera, I was going to show you how to do it, but it didn't really work. So what I've actually done is I've deliberately taken off some paint down the front here, uh, of this leading edge of the wing, you might be able to see those black bits. So what you need to do, you need to come along with your sanding stick, as we've done here, I've got a four-sided one, um, one of the Pro Modelers one, and just worked my way through all the grits until we're to this one that's like leather. Um, on the other side. Now I know the stills one's having a bit of trouble with that. Um, there we go, so we do, this one's like leather, so literally we can just come along and give it a polish to get rid of it and to even it up, because the thing is, if there's any type of step there, you'll see it very, very easily. Now I was lucky, and I did it just down here in this wing root area, so actually, you know, I took the decal with it and everything, so I had to re-put in the black line, which is very simple, just masked it, a very fine line in there, and filled it all in. This area is just a little bit more tricky, because it's in the line, but all we're going to do, is just take a square bounty. Now, one of the great things we use now clad, um, if we just find the polished metal, um, is that technically uh, you don't get overspray like you do with some others. Obviously we need to get the um, extraction booth working to suck any flakes that obviously gone airborne um, of the paint anywhere. But you can get in quite close to areas without having to worry about it too much. So what we'll do is we're just going to put a tiny drop down with so the colour cup. And we'll just clean off, off the excess, it's dribbled down the sides. Just check our flow a little bit. Now we're just going to put the extractor on. So what we do, we just blow in um, this edge. So there we go. Very light blows, drying it off. And there we go, that one's done. So we just flip it over and make sure we're all okay for the underside area. Same thing again.
because it is the slight draw black back with Alclad is that you do tend to be able to wear through it very, very quickly. So we just do a tiny bit of repair work to the leading edge, as we've done there. And we just leave the extractor going for a few moments, just to draw any um, overspray out of the air, because obviously we don't want it going onto the model anywhere. Okay, so the other things we've done is we put the lights on, these little clear lights, um, they're on, on each wing tip. Well, not quite the tip, but just before the actual uh, aileron on the side. Now I drilled a tiny little hole in the back of it and then gave it a dab of um, paint uh, in the back just so it gives the light so you've got the clear glass when it looks like a red bulb in there to give it that type of effect. As I say, refueling probe is very straightforward to go on. The other thing as well is there's a couple of little lumps and bumps, um, little intakes and things like that. They've gone in underneath um, as well to do that. The other thing as well, the brake lines have all been fitted, very straightforward. All we do is super glue one end and then just feed it through and away we go. You might be able to see on the bottom there, I've actually flattened off the tyres a little bit as well. Now the only drawback to that was, was that uh, it actually turned it into a little bit of a tail sitter and sitting back and it is extremely close, hence it sits on its tail like this. Uh, it's that close of being it and then obviously with the canopy on, um, it takes care of that bit just like that. So what we're going to do, we'll let that dry off and then we can do the final reveal. And there we go, there we have it, all done. Um, obviously we put the pit-hot tube on, a bit of super glue, done that. Because of um, the amount of filler, um, I know, bits and pieces we did around the nose ring, um, what I've actually done is I cut the tab off and just placed it. And then obviously we've got the, the different shades uh, in there just like that so that shows that off quite well been around just touched up a few little areas just with a little bit of silver paint perhaps where we'd had scratches and things like that occur but there we go a really really nice kit to work on um, I still maintain it's probably Airfix's uh, best one to date um, obviously they've got new stuff coming down the line now but certainly from my point of view it's one of their last you know when it was originally Airfix was before obviously Hornby took them over um, and their latest and best kit obviously there's lots of guises of around with it you can buy it as a Phoenix one where you get all the resin parts with it um, and certainly obviously Eddard are doing it and then I'm sure very soon we'll come along with the F6 version which has got a slightly different belly um, it's a, a bit more chunky um, sort of version of the lighting the later version no problems at all with it going together, certainly with this by not using the resin parts, using the photo etch parts at all. A few little areas just to watch, obviously your seam lines um, with the wings, take your time with those um, and you'll be absolutely fine. And, and obviously watch your nose weight because this one is still almost a tail sitter. It's very close to it so it might be worth just putting a little bit more sort of weight underneath the air intake as it runs down there um, and that will then certainly take care of any problems with it being a tail sitter. As I say this one's not by packing out that nose cone it's enough with lead to weight it so you don't have to really worry about it. Obviously we used Alclad on this one it's a funny substance to use there is other things obviously available. Um, another nice one we didn't really discuss in this build, but we have in other ones, is the Citadels. Now, Citadels you probably know from Games Workshop, things like that. Um, they're very nice paints to use. Um, they're very, very smooth, almost self-leveling to a point. But when you're airbrushing them, just thin them a lot. You have to thin them about 90% thinnest to 10% paint to get it to work. But there again, I've seen people hand paint lightnings like this with Citadels, for absolutely amazing results. Other ones you can actually use that we happen in this one um, is obviously the Guns. Um, range um, of actual uh, metal colours and these are all buffable as well. haven't used these on this particular build but there again that's another way of doing it. Obviously um, you've got your Tamiya um, types of metallic colour and you've got your Valero. Valeros I have had troubles with them in the past and I really ought to come back and do them again but certainly I tend to avoid Valeros for doing big areas because they just seem to not grip well. The surface seems to come off but that's on a different build. If you're a member of the site pop along to the tutorial new metal finishes um, when I did the P51 and P47 build. Um, it's not available as a DVD, it's members only, um, but that one it shows the complete mess that it made with that type of build. But there again, as I say, we've got around the problem by using Alclads. Gloss black on first, I know this isn't totally, totally necessary, but it, it gives you a nice base to work with. And when you've got that down and it looks good, then you can go over it and just see how it's going to be. Certainly picking out some of the panels um, over on the, the detail camera. 
Um, as you see, we went around and picked out those camera, uh, different ones. We've got the engine color on the difference back here. And then certainly uh, on the belly area, you can see that it's different types of metal effects, giving really different types of um, sort of tonal changes and coloring. And that's what it really needs. Obviously we did it on this area back here on the spine. It looks lovely in Triple One Squadron's markings with the black spine and tail and with the yellow works every time and with the lightning bolt. Little things really, um, as I say, just to watch out for. Really, wing joints, nose ring, just take a bit of time getting those right. The rest of the kit will fall together with no problems at all. I really hope you enjoyed the build. I know I certainly have enjoyed this one, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.